Next question is from Yois Sotelo. Do resistance training and nutrition play a factor for women who want to conceive? Totally. And the rest of the question is, would a woman have to switch up her diet and training regimen to better her chances of conceiving? Yes, it makes a big difference. Katrina did all this stuff. So one of the okay, so so first off, being healthy, generally healthy, overall healthy, body fat percentage isn't too low. Okay, because being too low can actually negatively affect your ability to conceive and also being too, too high. So you want to have a healthy range of body fat. And for women, this can be, this is typically uh, for conception around between 20 to 25%, not even leaner than 20%. Uh, I've known women who've been in the 17% body fat range, had to get their body fat up to 20 uh, before they can conceive. So in that range, General overall good health. That's the best, most uh, the, the biggest impact you're going to have on your ability to conceive. Now that being said, specifically, if we were to break down, okay, general health, everything looks good. What's the form of exercise that's going to contribute the most to a woman's ability to conceive? Resistance training always, and the reason why is resistance training is anabolic. It's pro tissue. It's pro hormone balance. It encourages a faster metabolism, which allows you to eat more. When your metabolism is becoming really, really, really thrifty, you can run the risk of sending a signal to your body that says, hey, uh, we're not getting much food, so probably having a baby is not a good idea. But when you're lifting weights, like we talk about all the time, you're able to eat more, and because you're able to eat more and still maintain a healthy body fat percentage, sends a wonderful signal to the body. Now, any form of exercise that's overdone is going to damage or or negatively affect your ability to conceive. So what I mean by that is even if you lift weights, but you just lift weights a lot and you're training like a maniac and you're pushing your body to the limit and you're always on the borderline of overtraining, probably not a good environment for conception. You want to be generally in a good kind of relaxed state. It's funny. I don't know if you guys have had friends, this happened to friends, but I've got several family members where they were trying you know, to conceive and then they, because they were trying, they were stressed out about it. It's not working. It's not working. Then they mm-hmm. gave up mm-hmm. and they just relaxed. Boom. Oh, yeah. It happens right away. Now, what, that whole stress what, all the now time. what are your thoughts? On, so let's say somebody just heard th- that statement you made about where percentage there you should be or ideal, right? Nothing's going to make the greatest impact than being having your body in a healthy state. And let's say somebody is listening to that and they want to get pregnant and they're like at 30, 32%, which is not crazy, but they're at 32% body fat. And so they hear that, and so they assume that if that's the best thing to do, they start dieting to get down to 2025 while they're also trying to consume. And while they're dieting like that, they may be running low calorie, low 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 fat intake. What's your thoughts on that? Because that's got to be essential too, is to make sure that you are hitting your, you know, essential amount of fat and protein for the day. I mean, I would think that makes a greater impact than actually getting that person's body fat percentage. Well, it down. depends why their body fat was in the 30s to begin with. You know what I'm saying? If they're if they just become healthier and then the body fat percentage starts to drop, then they're probably going to improve their their chances of conceiving. Typically, if you take a woman from 33 or 34 percent and you do it the right way down to 27, 26 percent, generally speaking, her health is going to uh, it's going to improve. But here's the thing, really. Forget the body fat percentage stuff. I, I, as I was saying it, I know I was thinking to myself, like, I probably shouldn't communicate this because people are going to take this the wrong way. Really, it's stay away from the extremes, right? Mm-hmm. Too, too shredded and really, really high. That's when you'll have some negative effects. The middle, which is going to be a big range, you're probably going to be okay. But if you're like shredded, I've, I've done this now. Um, let me think. I've had about five clients I can think of off the top of my head that were hardcore fitness fanatic female clients trying to conceive. And one of the factors that made them successful was taking their body fat from 12%, which is shredded for a girl, and gaining it up to 18 or 20%. And I mean, they were trying at the super shredded body fat for a long time. And finally, it was like, look, we got to get your body fat percentage up. You need to eat more food. You got to send a signal to your body that Mm. this is okay to get pregnant. And sure enough, as they gain body fat... Uh, they were able to to get pregnant. A little Barry White uh, doesn't hurt either. <laughs> Def- well, you know the mental all. state. Mental state makes a big difference. Like if you're if you're stressed out uh, a lot, if if even trying to conceive is stressing you out, 
That remember, your body doesn't want to put you in aren't a there position. Certain, aren't there certain foods and nutrients though too to have a for ovulation and stuff like that? I believe I remember Katrina reading, uh, and she was eating certain foods that like she, this is supposed to help with her ovulating. Like so, aren't there things like that that they can be doing? You want to you want to you don't want to be any nutrient. You don't want to have any nutrient deficiencies. So right. you want to be able to consume uh, meats. Um, you want to have egg yolks are very very good. Uh, a lot of the col- the choline that's present 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 in yolk, the cholesterol that's present in yolk, uh, fish, fish is also very important. That's also important throughout the whole pregnancy. Mm. Um, you you basically don't want to be deficient in anything. Oh, um, shellfish have nutrients that are vital to producing uh, or to have a healthy you know healthy consumption. Um, here's the other thing too. You don't want to like all of a sudden uh, try and hit new PRs and achieve new athletic performance during this period. You don't want to you know, challenge your body too hard with exercise while you're trying to conceive. You want to, that's what you do before. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, okay, we're going to try and have a baby simultaneously. I'm going to try and hit a mm. new PR and a deadlift and I want to be able to run the mile faster than you I did know, before. I remember when we were talking with Drew Canoli about it, uh, basically Organifi producing more seminal volume. Which one, <laughs> what? Uh, did he say that? No, remember there was a, we did a commercial, it was a like green a- juice, I believe. <gasps> Drinking more green juice produces a higher seminal volume. Well, I don't know. I haven't tested that yet. You it's don't remember? A, you were the one that put, said yeah, that. Yeah, you're the one that said that on the podcast. You, you, and then he was dro- like, oh, I knew about that. You dropped some study that had something to do with something that was in Organifi green Ashwagandha? juice. Ashwagandha? It might be. It I, don't, I don't remember what it was, but it, it showed that it, you produce higher volume of semen when you when you take this. And I remember that we talked about it. That was one of the big jokes when we first signed with Organifi yes. that we did this commercial around. I'm just around. I'm just trying to help you guys out. Yeah. Well, there are supplements that the man. But can that's take. as you say, that's for the guy though, right? Yeah, yeah for the guy is what I'm talking about. Yeah, there are certain supplements for the woman to <laughs> you take. Make, make but- your husband drink the green juice. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! You yeah. eat shellfish, I'll drink green juice. I, there are supplements that women can take to help, but I won't recommend any because I don't want to recommend any unless a woman works with a, a doctor or functional medicine practitioner because some of the pro-fertility uh, herbs that women can take can also reduce fertility if it's the if it's the wrong woman if she's taking it and, and it's not for her but for a man a man can take uh horny goat weed tribulus terrestris uh he could supplement with zinc and then ashwagandha all of those have been shown to improve sperm motility sperm number sperm health um those are all supplements i took when i was trying for my first two kids, and you know, it only took us a couple months or whatever, um, and they tend to help. But yeah, for for women, generally, you want to be healthy, and you don't want to go low in anything. You're not trying to go no carb, um, and you're not trying to go low fat. You want to kind of have everything because you want your body to think things are ample. We have uh, lots of resources. I'm not under a lot of stress. That's the state you want to be in. And a good person to follow, Dr. Gabriel Lyon was who was uh, in communication with Katrina the whole time during us trying to get pregnant and then her pregnancy. So she's been a great resource for us. So uh, if you're not following her on Instagram, you should follow her and look her up too. 